Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Greetings to you on this Tuesday morning. Glad to come together with you all. Um, be a part of your day as we go through the scriptures today. The thought for the day is going through Daniel chapter 2. And when I was going through this chapter of the Bible this morning, verse 21 speaks about how God is in control of the times and the seasons. He's in control of who's in authority and power in government and authority in general. And today I wanted to speak about the sovereignty of God. Sovereignty is basically a th theological term that means God is, you know, this, God is in control. He rules over all. Psalm chapter 2 verse 4 reminds us that God is up in heaven. He sees what's going on on the earth and he basically it says he's, he laughs. He is the ultimate control of everything. He is working out everything and according to his will. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11. And we know Romans chapter 8 verse 28 tells us that he's working everything out for our good. For those who are in Christ Jesus. According to his will and plan. But first and foremost, God is in control of the times and the seasons. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 reminds us that as long as there is seed time and harvest, winter, summer, the seasons will continue to go on. Nothing will change. Uh, the next chapter in Genesis chapter 9 verses 14 and 15, we're reminded that God made a covenant with the earth. He set up the rainbow in the sky that he would not destroy the earth by floods anymore. And sadly, here in America, we have taken the rainbow, which is a symbol of God's covenant of grace to, our, to his people here on earth, and made it into an image of sexual decadence and demoral um, pride. And uh, it's a symbol of um, arrogance and rebellion against God. God and uh, we should be praying uh, that God would have mercy on this country for what we've been doing. God is in control of the weather. Psalm 148, verse 8, all of the weather fulfills God's word. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 4, Nahum, the minor prophet in the Old Testament, chapter 1, verse 3, reminds us that God is in control of the weather. In the New Testament, in Mark chapter 4, verses 39 to 41, we read that when there was a storm on the sea, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, be still, and the storms listen to his voice proving that he was god many times you hear people say jesus wasn't god uh the false religions will tell you that well as i just quoted some scriptures in the old testament to remind us that god is in control of the weather when jesus christ walked this earth and he told the storms to be still they obeyed his voice proving that he was god so God is in control of the weather, not global warming, not climate change, not politicians that want to tell you the world is going to be destroyed. And I know I recently heard this young girl, AOC, her name is, she's a politician, telling us that the earth will be destroyed by fire in 10 years if we don't listen to her. 2008, Al Gore, former vice president, came out with a book and a movie telling us that we would be underwater in seven years, by 2015, we would be underwater as, as a, a civilization if we didn't listen to him. Well, eight years later, I am here walking on dry ground. It just goes to prove, you, prove to you, my friends, be careful who you listen to. Do not listen to the pundits on TV. Do not listen to the politicians when they tell you that the world is going to be destroyed if we don't listen to him or her. Listen to what God has to say. He's in control. Whenever somebody makes a prophecy and it doesn't come true, they're a false prophet. Everything that God says that is going to happen will happen. From the beginning of time, when God promises something, he will keep his word. Secondly, God is in control of those who are in authority. Um, Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 7 reminds us of the duties of those who are in authority. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 tells us that God, all power and authority is from God. As we read here in Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. But sadly, man oftentimes, when he doesn't want God to rule over them, God will give them over to corrupt leaders. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 7. God was grieved because he said the people didn't want me to rule over them, so they wanted an earthly leader and they got what they asked for. They got King Saul. You often hear me quote Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2, where it says, When the righteousness are in power, the people rejoice. 
But when the wicked rule, the people groan. We are groaning in America. We have leadership in this country right now. We have a president who just recently went to a uh, pride event to promote how we are to be proud of our sexual or uh, whatever we want to be sexually. We have a vice president who recently went to the continent of Africa and tried to push an agenda of LGBTQ rights to some people there that don't want no part of it. And I commend Africa and I commend these nations in, the, in Africa who told the vice president, go back to America with your money. We do not want your money. They're sticking by their principles. We can learn from them. You know, I grew up in America thinking that we were so high and mighty and that other nations were so poor and primitive and so evil and stupid. Well, we are becoming like Romans chapter one, verse 22 in this country. Professing to be wise, we're becoming fools. My friends, you can learn from others. Humility goes a long way. And as I often quote Proverbs 16, verse 18, Pride goes before haughty. Pride goes before fall, and a haughty spirit before destruction. Yes, we are to honor those in authority. First Peter chapter two verse seventeen tells us that we are to honor the king. We are to respect those in authority because they're from God. However, when they tell us to do things that go contrary to God's word, that's when it stops. In Acts chapter five verse twenty-eight, when the apostles Peter and John were told not to preach Jesus Christ. Verse 29 tells us we are to obey God rather than man. When the government here in America or wherever you live, because people see this devotional video around the world, wherever you live, if the government tells you to do things contrary to God's word, you are not to obey it. We do not riot. We do not destroy people's property like they do here in America. We pray. We, we stand strong in the Lord. We do not submit to the um, ways of Caesar, so to speak, on earth. We obey God's word. I hope today's devotional video, my friends, will remind us that God is in control. Regardless of what's going on in the world, regardless of what storms you're facing in your life, just as Jesus stilled the storm and told the storms to be quiet, if you come to Christ and submit to his authority, come under his yoke, and let him guide you. Doesn't mean your storms will go away. Cancer might not go away. A loss of a loved one, it still hurts, but he will see you through it. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. Praise you, Lord Jesus. You're in control. Amen. God bless.